All right, let's talk about play. I could probably talk about play skills for days and still there'd be more to talk about. Um, but I wanted to give you some basics to help you start working on this at home. So there are different stages of play. So there's solitary play, there's onlooker play, there's parallel play, there's associative play, and there's social play. So solitary play is just like what it sounds like. Your kiddo is playing with a toy, they're playing with something, they're not interested in anybody else, they're just doing their own thing by themselves. This is where a lot of our kiddos are sort of on their own, um, what they will do with play skills. And for our kiddos, they're not necessarily actually functionally playing with things when they're left alone. They're um, kind of stemming on them, opening and shutting doors, doing repetitive actions, lining things up. Um, but that is that level of play. And that all children go through um, a stage of solitary play. Onlooker play is when you're watching others, but you're not attempting to engage with them in any way. Um, and then we've got parallel play, and that's when a kiddo will play side by side with somebody else. They're not playing together in any way, but they may be doing the same thing. So two kids sitting in a sandbox playing with sand, neither one of them are interacting with the other, but they're both doing the same thing. And then you've got uh, associative play, which is when you're starting to join in with other people, but it's not organized, there aren't clear roles, but you are starting to actually interact with one another. And then you've got um, the social play, which also can be called cooperative play, and that's when you've got really clearly defined roles and organization to your interactive play. So, um, within that, you've also got um, sensory motor play, which is um, repeated movements with things. That's a lot of what we see our kids do. Um, shaking things, banging things, touching things. That's kind of the beginning stages of play. And then you've got functional play when kids are actually starting to manipulate items and do things that are appropriate. So maybe you're brushing the doll's hair or you're putting the shape in the shape sorter. Um, then you've got constructive play, which is really what it sounds like. Um, you're, you're constructing things, you're doing things, you're building with blocks, you're building with um, Legos, building straws, that kind of thing. Um, and then you've got abstract play, and that's really where um, pretend play, um, acting things out, putting on costumes, all of that comes into play. And then the last thing is games with clearly defined rules. So this is relative to your kiddos for a couple of reasons. Um, if you are going to do pretend, or excuse me, if you're going to do independent play with your kids, you are going to give them things that have a very open and shut um, beginning and end, close-ended activities for most of our kiddos. Now some of your kiddos have more play skills and can play either constructively excuse me, dramatically uh, pretend play on their own a little bit, um, or they may, mm, they're probably, that's probably where they are with things. So most of what we're going to give our kids is constructive play. So we're going to give them uh, Legos and we want them to build a tower. We're going to give them building straws and we want them to build. We're going to give them um, a puzzle to do that's close-ended, a pegboard, stringing beads, that kind of thing. Um, if your child is able to do pretend play by themselves, that's beautiful. Um, but for most of what you're going to set out for independent play, it'll be in the category of the constructive play. Now, if you want to work on play skills with your kiddo, we need to think about what the different levels will look like and what will be appropriate for your kid. So um, if we go back to the stage where they're manipulating items appropriately as they're meant to be and we think about the foundations of pretend play, um, a really effective thing that you can do with your kiddo is get out um, a baby doll and a hairbrush and the, a fake phone and um, 
things like that. So you can show them how to brush a baby's hair, how to give a baby a bottle, how to hug the baby, rock the baby, all the different associated things that would be appropriate to do with the baby. What to do with the pretend phone, how to talk on the phone, how to give it to somebody else, how to hang up the phone, how to pretend the phone is ringing. Um, think of all the different pretend play components and then think of associated things that you could do with that. There's a lot you can do with a baby doll. Um, you can get pretend food out, do a picnic. You could get out um, animals and stuff to build a fence. You could show them how to make an animal eat food, how to make an animal pretend to drink water, how to put an animal to bed, how to put the baby to bed. So think of all the associated appropriate pretend actions for an item and get that out and Depending on your kiddo, you can model it and then have them copy you if they're at that language level. Um, if they can follow what you're saying, spoken words, you know, you can tell them, let's feed the baby, let's hold the baby, let's rock the baby, let's have a picnic, let's cook the pizza, let's flip the burger, um, let's talk on the phone, all those different kinds of things. Um, and that can be something that you can work on on the token board. And you can start with just doing one thing with the item and then you can try to do a sequence let's get a car and put a pretend person in the car and then let's close the car door and then let's push the car you know that would be a series of three different things that you did with the car so you can work on sequences like that with um, associated items and what you're doing is building the skills for more complex pretend play and hopefully giving them appropriate ways to play with toys that they might engage in on their own or at some point with friends. Now within constructive play which is where I do a lot of play with all of our kiddos and I'm at an advantage because I have lots of different things that you can use to construct with. Um, you want to think about whether your kiddo is at a point where they just know how to build up so that sort of tower building or if they're ready to build out and start to have walls to things. Um, very beginning stages of play are towers that go straight up and then once we're able to do that and you know I would measure someone being able to do that by if I put them in the play area and I gave them blocks did they build a tower and if I want to engage in back and forth play can we together take turns building a tower. If they can do that then you can start working on how to build walls, how to build up and around, make a house, pretend it's a restaurant, um, that kind of constructive building. And depending on your materials, depends on how complicated you want to get with it. If you have Lego kits and you want to try to build from a diagram with your kiddos, you can certainly do that. Um, if you have, I have like building straws that I love, you can start constructing um, 3D items that actually look like a house. They're very cool. So it really depends on your materials here, but keep in mind that really simplistic sort of tower building versus more complicated structural building. And then keep in mind, are you taking turns doing this? My turn, your turn, my turn, your turn. I put a piece on, you put a piece on, you watch me when I put something on, I watch you and comment when you put something on. Um, or are you going to show them how to do it and sit back and let them do it. Um, and then uh, pretend play. Pretend play is complicated layers of many different play skills. Um, and it involves imaginary thought. It, ima it involves abstract thought. It imagine You have to imagine. You have to pretend. You um, start associating, or excuse me, um, Replacing one item with another, a blue block might become water in this scenario. Um, you might pretend a tissue is a blanket. Um, the other pieces of pretend play is that um, you, if you're playing with somebody else, there's all the levels of interacting back and forth. Okay, you pretend that you're going to be the train guy and you're really grumpy and I'll be the person getting on the train. Or if you're having characters do it. There's now dialogue between the characters. So think about your child's language ability. And if they're not having 
conversational exchanges, then pretend play that involves dialogue can be difficult. So you want to stick to really easy scripts if you're trying to work on dialogue. Hey, what are you doing? I'm doing blah, blah, blah. Okay, here I come. And you're really, you're guiding it. It's essentially a story. When you do pretend play, the easiest way to do it is to kind of invent a story in your head. So it has a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning is setting it up together. Let's pretend that our friends are going to a castle to find a missing crown. You've generated the idea. Now you need to help them gather the materials for this pretend play. What will be the crown? What are you going to use to build the castle? And who are your characters going to be? Or are you pretending to be the characters? Um, so you get all the materials and then you're going to walk them through building it. Let's build a castle. We can use these blocks. Let's turn take to build the castle. Again, you're kind of helping them with what the structure should look like. It's your idea to build the castle. Um, so you can, oh, we're going to do it this way and show them how to build, even if you're just building a square and that's your castle. Great. So then if you're using little characters, oh, let's get our characters. Who do you want to be? Oh, let's get our crown. Let's hide it inside the castle. If you need help generating play ideas, think about episodes of kids' shows that your kids watch. Dora is a great one. You can, you can copy it. Like, you can watch one of the episodes and pretty much invent a scenario very similar. It's very formulaic. There's um, a problem that needs to be solved. It involves a journey that usually has three geographical locations that you have to go to, and then in the end you solve it. That's really how we set up pretend play. So you set up the problem, and then you set up how you're going to solve it, and then you end it because you've solved it. So let's just go with the castle and the crown. That's what popped into my head right away. So you helped your kid know the concept. Here's what we're going to play. You've helped them get the materials. You've helped them get the characters, unless you're going to be the characters. It's as much fun to pretend to be the characters as it is to get figurines, but it's a little bit of a, a higher level pretend abstract sort of skill to take on being a character. Um, so you can, you can test it and see how it goes. And if your kiddo is like, what are you talking about? Like, oh, I'm the farmer and you're going to be the horse. Are you hungry? And your kid's just like, what? You know, they, they might not be ready for that. They might be ready just for the figurines. So you've built your little square castle because you've helped your kid with the concept of how you're going to build it. You've got it. You've got your crown, whatever you're going to pretend it is. You've hidden it. So your problem is finding the crown. You need some sort of solution. So you can make it super simple um, and help guide the dialogue. Oh, I've lost my crown. I think it's in the castle. Will you come with me? That's easy. All your kid has to say is yes. Um, okay, let's go. Oh, I see the castle. Do you see it? Yes, that's all they have to say. Um, oh, man, the door to the castle is locked. What do we need? If they can't come up with the answer, a key. Hmm, we need to see if we can find a key. At this point, you can do something really simple, like grab something and pretend it's the key to unlock the door. Um, bring in another character. Ask them if they have a key. Have them hand you something that's a key. If you have something that resembles a key for real in your toys or you want to go get your own keys, you can go do that. Get the key. Oh, look, we found the key. Now we can unlock the door and get in to find the crown. See how all of my words are leading this play? It leaves very limited amounts for my kiddo to have to generate. Um, I'm guiding them through all of it. And if they get stuck at any point, I'm going to give them the words for it. And then... We unlock the key. We use the key, unlock the door. Oh, I think I see the crown. Come over here. Do you see it? Kid says yes or no. It's right there. Oh, we did it. We found the crown. Let's go home. That's the end of your pretend play. You could make it three minutes. You could make it 20 minutes. It's up to you. Um, so take into consideration where you think your kid is in the different levels of learning play. Because pretend play, it involves being able to generate a lot of language abstract thought, being able to pretend, the cooperative engagement of the back and forth, generating that dialogue, following along, attending to what I'm attending to. Um, there's a lot of skills that go into that. 
um, most of your kiddos, it will be really helpful just to work on the constructive play and to work on um, those steps of how to play with lots of different items that would build into more complicated pretend play later. And then um, the last kind of play that we talked about that highly organized play where we're talking about board games with very specific rules. These are awesome, awesome, awesome for everybody. So you can do something as basic as Connect Four. It's a two-player game. You don't need to worry about your kiddo understanding the strategy of how to win. Just the turn take. I put one in, you put one in. I put one in, you put one in. That turn taking is a key back and forth skill. They have to pay attention to what you're doing while it's your turn. Um, so that they know when it's their turn, they have to know that they can't do anything while it's your turn. Um, 